Let's see a new topic about function. A function is a device that group a set of statements so they can be run more than once in a program. So imagine that you have a part of your code that you want to use in your program several times. Instead of copying that part of program every time and pasting, you should maximize the code reuse and minimize redundance. So that's why you can create a function so that every time that you want to perform that set of calculation, you just call that function. Functions are also useful for use. Functions are also useful for procedural decomposition. Imagine you want to teach your robot to cook a food. You have to tell him a set of instruction how to wash for example the cooking pot another set of instruction how to put the cooking pot on fire is another set of instructions how to prepare your your meal and another set of instruction on how to serve the food and so on so you can divide all of this procedure of cooking a uh, food in different function at different steps it makes your code more structured until this point we have already seen what we were calling built-in function the type of built-in functions that you have seen were the print function that allowed us to print the result in the terminal the input function that allows us to ask from the user uh, an input in order to perform calculation the float that was helping us to convert a string to a float type and the int that was helping us to convert an integer that was helping us to convert a string to an integer there are many other type of building functions that come with python but imagine that you are writing your code and you want to write your own functions so that's what we are going to see in this section the example we are going to use in this case for illustration of the importance of function is how to solve a quadratic equation which is a x squared plus b x plus c equals to zero let's go in our hello world project and we erase now we know that to solve the quadratic equation we need the coefficient a b and c so i must define those coefficients let's say a is equal to one b is equal to two and for example c is equal to minus one So this is quadratic equation we want to solve. Now we know that to solve a quadratic equation we must compute the discriminant that is generally called in mathematics delta. So I will say delta is equal to b square minus 4 times a times C. so that's the formula to compute the discriminant so we know that with this the first solution is x1 is equal to i put the parenthesis b, b minus square root of delta so it's delta power 0 0.5 divided by parenthesis 2 times a 2 times a so that's the solution of and this I copy and I paste so x2 is equal to b those are the two solutions we have 
in a second degree quadratic equations but we don't always have these two solutions it depends on the value of delta we know that if delta is greater than zero that's when we have these two solutions so we understand that we must put here a if statement so if delta is greater than zero two point so notice that i have x which is on the line as red you remember it means that there is a problem what's the problem the indentation so i must press tab i press tab again so my code is indent beautiful if the discriminant is equal to zero so i will put another condition l if delta is equal to zero then i print i have only one solution so x one is equal to b divided by parentheses two times a so that's when i have only delta equals to zero else that is when delta is negative i don't have any solution so print no solution no solution before we run the code let us in this case say you should that you should print the result so print we are going to use formatted string to dynamically render the value though so i say f, f like formatting string and i say x1 is equal to i put my curly braces and i put x1 we paste it and we change x2 x2 okay very good the same thing here we paste x2 and x2 that is instead x1 and x1 so now let's print and see first of all the result so you see the values are we are in the first case the values are x1 minus 0 and 0 0.4 and x2 2.4 imagine now that i want to solve the same equation with different values of a b and c but i don't want to lose this result so i want to know the result of this bunch of values a b and c and i want maybe to compare with another values of a b and c so you understand that i will be obliged in that case to copy all this code to copy it and i will paste it here for example and i will come here and maybe if i want to change the value of b i can say maybe b equals to three maybe a equals to two and if i print again i will have x1 and x2 for the first equation and i will have x1 and x2 for the second equation so now if i want to do this ten, 10 times i will be obliged to copy the code 10 times so i will be duplicating the code that's not good at all in programming that's where function come in if i write this with the function very well every time that i would like to solve again a second degree equation i will just call that function and solve it without copying the code so let's see how it works let's first of all delete this so i e erase this till here good now i will show you how i will structure this code so that i can reuse it later to create a function i must use the keyword def then i put the name 
of the function I can put any name that I want for example I can put solve equation so I can put this I put parentheses and I put two point good now in this parentheses I must put what we call in Python variables it's quite similar as in mathematics when you define a function of f of x where x is the variable but in this case we call them the parameters so the parameters will be a b and c so i put here a b and c this delta must also be in the function so i cut it and i paste it in the function so notice that i have a red everywhere here it means that i have a problem you remember and the problem is maybe you have already guessed is because i haven't indent my function my uh, because i haven't indent my code so in order to indent i select it all and i press tab beautiful now i can erase this a b and c i can erase it all and go back up very good so this is how i've created a function that generalizes the solution of second degree equation Every time that I would like now to solve a second degree equation anywhere in my program, I will no more copy all of these and paste again, no? But I will just call this function and it will solve for me. So let's, for example, solve, let's copy this and we want, for example, to say equation 1 is equal to paste so the value of a let's say as the previous example is one the value of b is two and the value of c is minus one if we call that function on these three parameters a b and c and if we print now that we have defined our function we are not going to print directly the result but we are going to say that it should return this a new word return the value of x1 and the value of x2 the same thing here it should return the value of x1 and if we are in the last case it, it should print no solution so let's try with this equation one so let's say at this point it should print equation one and let's run the code so you see i have here the value of 0 0.41 just like in the previous case and 2.41 now what is very interesting with the function is that if i want to solve another equation let's say equation 2 i will not have to copy the code as we did before but i will just call again the solve equation and i will just put the values of a let's say for example a equals to 2 b equals to 3 and maybe c equals again to minus 1 and if i print now equation 1 and equation 2 i run the code you see i have the solution for the first equation and solution for the second equation and i can play with numbers again i can change i can put equation 3 or you can you see it's very interesting you can put maybe minus 2 here and you say print equation i copy i paste python is so funny that's why i love python 
so you put the question tree and you print again you have the three solutions so it's very interesting of using function in your program in order to structure it in a aesthetic and good way i will be very glad if you tell me in comment box below why you want to learn python programming language i'm planning to do the second part of this python basics with more advanced topics so if you like what i'm doing and you want to encourage me please just please just like the video and share it with others ciao